This is an overview of the NSA's Loud Auto audio-based RF retroreflector. This is a planted device which is used to extract audio intelligence from the uh, remote target location. The actual bug itself consists of a NOLAS EK or EY series uh, microphone feeding a uh, which is most likely a uh, tiny AVR uh, programmed as a uh, pulse position modulator usually at a ultrasonic uh, carrier frequency and that is then used to toggle the uh, gate of a uh, FET which, is the, which generates the actual modulation There's a little more detailed block diagram the Nolus microphone picks up the target audio. It should be a low pass filtered and amplified if it needs so needed. Um, it needs to be low pass filtered to prevent aliasing. That is fed into the pulse position modulator. Uh, in this example, the pulse position modulator is running at 100 kilohertz. Uh, it generates a pulse position modulated pulse train, which is then fed into the gate of our FET device which has a uh, antenna on the drain and then from our remote uh, radar unit that illuminates the, the, the bug essentially and it creates an amplitude modulated backscatter signal there's essentially two modulations on here we have the actual RF backscattered RF is amplitude modulated which f but when put the uh, pulses essentially back together it's going to form a uh, FM subcarrier which is on equal to the clock frequency of the pulse position modulator. So, for example, if the photo angle unit was at uh, 1 gigahertz, and the pulse position modulator is 100 kilohertz, we'd have a 100 kilohertz subcarrier on that 1 gigahertz illumination frequency. Without the uh, microphone attached, you can essentially uh, just use the clock signal as a beacon to peak your uh, antennas for uh, better illumination. Use it as like a received signal strength indicator. For our example, a uh, pulse position modulator, I'm just using a uh, LM567 tone generator configured to generate the uh, pulse train at around 100 kilohertz. Modulation input uh, can essentially be a, you know, anything, but it needs to be very high level, 200 millivolts peak to peak in this particular case. Um, I don't have a microphone on it because I'm just using it uh, this is just for an example. The uh, output of the uh, pulse position modulator at pin 5 needs to be buffered, just a standard uh, hex inverter just to prevent the loading of the uh, oscillator itself. The frequency is determined by the uh, 10k ohm resistor and the uh, 1000 picofarad capacitor. Uh, the buffered pulse train is then uh, sent to the uh, standard uh, FET modulator that we're using in the Tawdry Yard experiments. Here's what the example uh, pulse position modulator board looks like. The cell put connector is go to the uh, uh, FET modulator and this connector down here is the modulation input. On the oscilloscope screen, I have the uh, pulse position modulator hooked up. On the top trace, you're seeing the raw pulse train output 
from the pulse position modulator at around 106 kilohertz, standard 5 volts peak to peak. Now I'm going to show you an example when it's modulated on the second trace. I just have a uh, 5 hertz sine wave just to make it easy to see. You can see the just a five hertz sine wave. You can kind of see how the on pulse position modulation, it's the actual position of the uh, pulses itself. And it gets modulated by the input audio. And that's essentially on the demodulation is turned it's a standard dog frequency demodulation. So what we're doing is generating a, a subcarrier frequency, frequency modulated subcarrier at that uh, pulse position modulation frequency. This is just an easy, uh, frequency modulation tends to be better in handling noise, so you want to kind of use that for your uh, uh, audio intelligence extraction. I can show you how it generates the subcarrier. Here I just have the raw pulse position modulator board connected up to the FET modulator now. That's generating the 100 kilohertz pulse train unmodulated right now. I have uh, our uh, Decatur Range Master radar, which I'm using for the illumination radar, operating at uh, about 10.53 gigahertz right now. And should be able to show you how it generates a subcarrier. If you watch the oscilloscope screen, you already see the 100 kilohertz subcarrier. Um, if we had the proper spectrum analyzer, you'd be able to tune into that subcarrier and FM demodulate it directly. a little better view of the uh, 100 kilohertz subcarriers which would contain the FM what you FM demodulate those subcarriers to receive your uh, target intelligence there's a black diagram of the uh, photo angle or CTX 4000 uh, radar unit. If you don't have a uh, spectrum analyzer to directly receive the backscattered signal, it's possible to take the uh, one of these outputs, the I or Q output, from the radar unit. And then I have a, this is a uh, VLF converter. What this does, it converts one kilohertz to 500 kilohertz up to 10.001 megahertz to 10.5 megahertz. Essentially what this is doing is uh, converting uh, low frequencies up to high frequencies so they're uh, easier, better easy to receive on a standard uh, communications receiver. This is an AOR AR8000. I can show you that a little better example here.
Okay, I have the uh, pulse position modulator board connected to the VLF converter through an attenuator just to uh, knock down the, uh, the signal because this is designed to operate at uh, low uh, power levels. I have a uh, 1 kilohertz sine wave going into the modulation input. Now I'm going to tune the AOR 8000 to about 10.106 megahertz wide FM and you can hear the 1 kilohertz tone. That is essentially um, all you really need to do on the receive side. Uh, you need to you're just tuning in the uh, subcarrier frequency in this particular case is being up converted to 10 megahertz but uh, we're tuning into the 100 kilohertz subcarrier at 10.06 or so uh, megahertz and that's standard uh, wideband FM which is like you know standard broadcast FM so you have a nice uh, fairly clean signal you can hear a little bit of static because of the attenuation but um, and change the you, know. you don't necessarily have to operate these bugs in the audio band um, you could theoretically you could uh, get subsonic um, mechanical you know bangs and stuff from uh, like wheels or uh, lock wheel packs or um, you can even use ultrasonics there might be emanations from like a computer or something that you could uh, ultrasonic emanations from that could reveal uh, target intelligence or crypto intelligence, you know, leakage, stuff like that. Again, here's a, there's 3 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz. Um, for the, I'm using an only 500 millivolt peak to peak uh, input uh, on the uh, LM567 uh, modulator. Uh, I believe the real the NOLAS microphones um, we have a much lower level output directly from the microphone so you may have to add a little like 10 dB or so uh, audio amplifier on the output of the uh, microphone but uh, you kind of have to uh, tweak it to your particular target too much um, gain on your microphone output will just uh, give you a bunch of noise and that's no point in doing that That's uh, essentially all it is. Um, if you had, if you had to, or had the particular receiver, you could just connect a uh, like a hundred kilohertz receiver directly to one of these IRQ IRQ uh, outputs from the uh, radar unit itself. But um, I don't have a direct receiver that goes down that low frequency. That's why I had to use the uh, secondary up converter. But uh. In the uh, actual NSA pamphlet, they use the Roden Schwartz spectrum analyzer. They're not even bothering with the. They're essentially um. They'd have a. They're using this as a separate receiver and just kind of pointing it at the, pointing the antenna at from the uh, spectrum analyzer at the uh, targeted backscattered signal, and they're uh, FM demodulating the signal directly. But it's just a, it's kind of a waste. You know, there's really no reason there's a waste of spectrum analyzer doing that, but. Uh, it makes it easier to tune into the uh, subcarrier frequencies. Each of these devices, have, if you use multiple multiple devices, planted devices, it should each have its own uh, particular uh, frequency or subcarrier frequency to avoid to be able to you know pick them out. And they uh, are powered from a standard uh, three volt uh, lithium cell, and the uh, current draw is really low, so they should be able to last about a year or so.